good to be back always it's your boy it's old sam i'm chilling if i'm not chilling i am trying to chill as soon as possible as is the motto here uh i guess if the show has a motto it's that i'm trying to chill if there's anything distinguishing about me it's that i'm trying to trying to chill uh yeah it's been it's been hectic life's been life's been pretty pretty hectic uh man what's what's happened so my boss my boss's boss uh if you guys don't know i'm a delivery boy i deliver hot tasty pies about 40 hours a week you know on a good week if i make decent money i can get out of there working like 25 30 but my boss's boss decided to pull the trigger and fire like five drivers, right? Like, like these guys are not the best drivers. They don't show up on time. You know, they're always asking to leave early. Sometimes they just don't show up at all. It's like, how many times can you show up to a job? How many times can you not show up to a job and, you know, like, like not get fired? It's crazy. Um, and, and it sucks because they're all pretty decent people. They're all pretty nice, but... I don't want to have to stay late for you if you're if you're working. And the worst part about that now is that now they don't work there and I have to stay late anyway. So I've been working until like 7, 38 at night, every night. And I still have real stuff to do uh, afterwards. You know, I have dreams to chase afterwards. So yesterday I text my buddy. I text Jeremy, the dude who's playing guitar uh, in my band. And I'm like, yo uh band practice you know let's record some tracks tonight it's 4 26 i text him at 4 26 i'm like i'll be off in a few minutes uh half an hour tops right assuming one a, a driver is going to show up so one of them does two of them don't so i'm stuck there two out of four drivers show up that night so i'm stuck there till eight they cut me at eight because they know you know i'm not supposed to be there it's like 10 orders up on the screen I'm like you guys sure they're like we haven't heard from the drivers you know there's no use keeping you here this whole time it's like all right cool chill i'm fine with that um and so i got out of there and then i hit my boy up and i was like yo you can come down record some demos so oh big news big news i got a new computer i don't know if you guys can tell maybe i sound a little fresher i uh it's got this little fun gadget to it <laughs> you know i can do that if i want uh, I, I'm moving up in the world, guys. I'm not going to tell you what kind of computer I got, but I did get it at the Apple store, the Apple book pro store to be specific. Um, and it was time. If you've listened to the podcast, if you've listened to every episode, you've heard me complaining about my computer. You've heard me complaining about, uh, you know, the processing power and whatnot, and it just doesn't do what I need it to do. And now I'm a, like, if I plugged in one guitar before, it would just shut the whole thing down. It would, it would be too much processing. I would lose all the progress. Computer would shut down. On top of that, uh, when I went to Mexico for the first time, I left my computer plugged in the entire time, and then I came back, and the battery was kind of shot. Uh, so now if I unplug it, it dies and, like, doesn't have a battery life over 1%. And so I'm going to try and get that fixed, but... You know, it's it's a nine year old computer. I think I think near a decade for a computer is pretty good. Um, and I'm I'm really excited about this feature, baby. Like, mm. and it's kind of teaching me piano. Like I've learned that this is a uh, I don't know, like a G chord. That means this is a I don't know an A. Honestly, before it showed me what they were, and now it's not, and that's kind of bugging me. Let's see if this... Mm -mm, nope, doesn't matter. We'll get back to it. Uh, so so I'm kind of learning keyboard on my typing keyboard, which is a fun little uh, fun little deal. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Who cares? Um, so I, I've been working late, right? Like uh, last Tuesday, I worked late, came home, recorded a podcast with Annie and Matt. It was a blast. You know, then Wednesday's movie night, Thursday we did comedy, uh, got up for the first time in a long time, uh, and it went pretty well. It went good enough 
that the host of the show is like, hey, you should come with us to this this other show. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I mean, he, he referred to me as, a, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but, you know, I wish I had a horn one set up on this. I should have done that in, in advance. Uh, but he, he was like, dude, you're a crusher. You got to get up more. And uh, I was like, did I accidentally step on your toe? Or am I, am I ruining the chair by sitting down? Um, you know. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. It's dumb. It's dumb. Everything's dumb. Uh, so I didn't go out to the next mic, but but this week I'm trying to hit more. Uh, he did inspire me to check out one of the more popular mics in the room. And I got up because everybody gets up there first time, and it went pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to keep signing up there. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a hierarchy thing, so you got to sign up so many times before you get up again. But I'm excited to, to have another place to go. And this Thursday, I'm going to try, if I get off work in time, to hit a brewery and then a bar and then a pizza joint. Uh, you know, a 7 o'clock, an 8 o'clock, and then a 10 o'clock show. And and if not, I'll do two of them for sure. I might not get to that brewery. That one's going to be tough. Uh, and then sign up at the, at the other place. So... It's been good. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling momentous. Uh, I'm going to try and get up, you know, four or five more times before I go on this, this little trip. I'm going out uh, western South Dakota to stay in a cabin with my family. And we're not cabin people, you know. When I think of people who go to the cabin, I think of people who fish. I think of people who get drunk. You know, we don't do that. We're not fishing people. We're not drinking people. At least, like, my family doesn't drink together. I know everybody... Uh, well, we'll indulge here and there, but it's, it's going to be weird. A week in a cabin with my immediate family, my uncle, you know, my nephews, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a new experience to say the least. And maybe it'll be the, the beginning of something beautiful, you know, like, uh, like when I was born, my family was finally satisfied. They're like, we've had enough. Four is enough. Uh, this is the, per- <laughs> this is the perfect boy. Um, <laughs> Uh, what, what all, I picked up a shift on Saturday, you know, I, I was out at the bar until like one thirty in the morning for the comedy thing. And I picked up a shift the next morning, just rolling in it, just making bank, baby. You know, just stacking paper. Like I'm a stripper who people actually want to see. Uh, <laughs> I recorded an episode last night after Jeremy took off my guitar player, my guitar player, my friend, my homie, uh, and I don't, I woke up this morning and was like, I don't remember a single thing I, I recorded last night. I was so tired. I'm going to listen back to it, maybe release it down the road. You know, I'm sure it's kind of funny, but for now, this is what you guys get. Okay. Okay. Uh, Monday night, Sunday night, we're back to it. Cinco de Mayo. The homies are grilling out. I learned that, that in my household there is a a massive failure to communicate right and i'm i'm a part of that because sometimes i just forget to tell people that hey i have a guitar player coming in at 8 30 on a a monday night to to record some tracks uh but also there's this group chat right like it started off with one of the homies saying hey do you guys want to grill on sunday and we were all like yeah and then there was like a few more things and my data was turned off. So I didn't get those until later. And then I get a text from one of the roommates and he's like, Hey, so we, here's the list of things that the other guy, the other roommate's going to get from the store. Right. So apparently they had talked. If there's anything you want at it, you know, tell him. And I was, I was like, you know, I, I'll just get some wingies, you know, I'll bring some wingies, baby. And then, so Sunday morning rolls around, right? And I get up, I, I go to church, I go to the grocery store, I do meal prep for the week because I'm trying to be healthy. So I cooked a full like set of chicken breasts, uh, pre-packed a bunch of salads for lunch, boiled some eggs, you know, all of these things that I think are supposed to be healthy. And then I get a call from from roomie number two who was supposedly according to roomie number one going to the grocery store and he's like hey man i'm going to the grocery store you need anything and i was like yeah what do you mean aren't you getting everything and he's like that's news to me so apparently at some point they talked and one person got the assumption that uh someone was getting something and the other one thought 
we were all getting our own things. So we invited a bunch of people. Luckily, nobody came except for one roommate's girlfriend and, and Jeremy, my guitar player, my, my friend, my friend. Uh, and, like, the wingies were great. People were like, these are great. What'd you put in them? I'm like, I'll tell you what. I put some chipotle garlic McCormick seasoning, some crushed red pep, some chili pep, some garlic salt because I'm not an I'm not a butthead. Uh, salsa, buffalo sauce, Texas, uh, or excuse me, Louisiana hot sauce. Yeah, I just really put put a splash of white vinegar in there or rice vinegar. Uh, and they were good, baby. Like, I don't want to toot my own horn. <laughs> this is, I love this. I love this. There's nothing cooler than being able to play. There's tons of things cooler than being able to play piano on your keyboard. But there's not a lot that I know about that I can do on my own, like playing piano on my keyboard. I can play piano on my keyboard. Bet that you're thinking, yeah, duh, bro, that's normally how it goes. And I'm not great at singing along or improv don't even know how to end a song damn wow kid's got some chops kid has some chops so i guess when it comes down to it uh i need to get better at communicating my homies i think maybe everybody our age yeah, you know, millennials just need to get better at communicating because it's either we're in constant communication with cell phones or less so. And I, I prefer less so, I think. Like, I'm, a, I'm addicted to Facebook. I'm addicted to social media, you know. Uh, but I've been trying to cut down on my screen time. I've been tracking it uh, with this app. I think everybody should do that. You know, it gives me a weekly re report. You know, you're down 12% this week. I think since I began, I'm down like 12 hours a week, right? Like the average human, uh, <laughs> obviously, because animals don't have screen time, but the ad average human con consumes like 35 hours of, of screen time a, a day, right? And that's like minimum, like that's just your phone. And so, like, say you, you're on your phone, you're just, like, swiping and stuff. You don't know how much time is going. So I have limits set up, you know. I don't follow those limits super strictly. Like, you know, Facebook will warn me every 15 minutes that I've been on for 15 minutes. And, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll accept it and sometimes I'll deny it. The more and more I accept it, the easier it is to, you guessed it, accept it. And it's better, you know. And it, it helps that, like, I always overuse my family's data plan. I always do it. I wish I wasn't on it, but I am. I'm an idiot. Uh, but I, I work, the, the pizza place I work at is surrounded on all sides by a, a charter school, right? A, a la, kind of a last chance stop for these kids. And so they have Wi-Fi, but it's all protected. And so I can't get on the apps. You know, I can't get on the dating apps. I can't get on the social apps. I can get on Gmail. I can get on Wells Fargo. I can get on Airbnb, oddly enough. You know, so so not all for for not, but uh, man, something about doing these solos that that I forget because it has been a while since I've done this. It's been over five weeks, I think. It's hard to talk to yourself for a long period of time, especially when you have a like literally a piano, not literally a piano, but you know, you know the makings of a. The makings of a piano sitting in front of me. I'm getting better, but I'm still not good, baby. Yeah. Maybe I should get a pianist to sit in on these. You know, um, what are they talking about? Failure to communicate, screen time, you know, just less time on social media leads to a happier, fulfilling life, I think. Um, you know, but it, which is weird because my mom has social media and she's super happy and my dad doesn't have it. He's miserable, you know? So who's to say, uh, you know, the grill out went well on Cinco de Mayo. I'm partial to Mexico for obvious reasons. Got homies down there. And 
other than the fact that we had two packages of brats and like 16 wings, everybody seemed pretty happy. I went and got some potato chips, got some top of the tater. Uh, one of the homies grabbed some potato salad. So it wasn't terrible, but it's kind of a weak showing for the first grill out of the season. And I kind of like, I kind of pride myself in someone who who's pretty good at having, like throwing a grill out. I'm not the best griller. I have buddies who are better grillers. But like pineapple, corn, asparagus, you know, get get a couple salads, potato, maybe a baked, maybe a loaded baked potato salad. Y'all ever have a loaded baked potato salad? If not, stop what you're doing. Go get that ish, dog. It is unreal. It's so good. Um, so yeah, we just chilled, um, had a fire. My, my roommate's girlfriend was asking me what my process is with stand up and, and with, with, uh, to a lesser extent, this bad boy, I, to, to be honest, I don't even know if she knows I have a podcast, but what's your process? She's so fascinated, right? And that's awesome. Like, I'm happy to talk about it. There's just not a lot to talk about. Like, she's curious about like what I do when the crowd isn't reacting well. And it's like, I don't even know what to do when they do, you know, react well. I had a good amount of laughter on Friday night and I could not stop stepping on it. You know, I was just like, guys, stop laughing. I want to tell my jokes already. You know, like shut up. We all got the joke. Let me move on. So uh, there's not a whole process to it you know I, I i smoke a little weed and i i write stuff down that i find humorous you know I, I try to be observant i try to observe things make observations you know write them down in a little notebook things i find funny you know it's like why do you only see cross-country skiers uh, in the summer practicing you know you and like in parking lots there's there's not a joke there but there's it's, there's something and so is there's there's just a you you dig into it and and you know you try stuff out on stage and sometimes it doesn't work you know i have i have a bit that has never worked and i know that it's funny and i know it will work someday once i write it. Uh, it it so so if i have a crowd that's not digging me and that's happened a lot because the room i get up most often is pretty small not a huge crowd you know the comics stay and watch you know, every now and then you'll get a handful of people coming in off the street, you know. And, and last week it was a really good room until I got up and I was the last one up. So I was telling a joke. I was telling jokes to my homie and then three dudes. And then there was like seven or eight, nine people at the bar. And I got their attention and they laughed. And it was, it was, it was a good feeling. Uh, but when a set goes poorly, like... I have a lot of jokes that are kind of racy, and they're not about race. They're about, you know, doesn't matter. Come see my set sometime. I'm not going to kill my jokes on a podcast. But, you know, if people aren't digging those, I'll try and go into another one that's different. Or, like, if they're not enjoying my bad character work, you know, because I think it's hilarious. And that's a good sign, but not everybody does. And so... You know, you just try and figure out how to do that. And I mean, I've been doing this for six months with a solid two and a half taken off in the middle. So, uh, I mean, I'm still learning. You know, I'm not a pro. I, I'm still learning the podcast. And I've been doing that much longer than I've been doing, doing stand-up. Uh, but it's it's something I'm going to keep chasing, you know. Uh, what else has been going I've been so busy. Like, I'm not even caught up on my stories, dog. Like, I haven't watched this week's AP Bio. I haven't watched the t last two weeks' Brooklyn Nine-Nines. I haven't seen Barry. I haven't seen Veep. I haven't seen Abby's. And everybody who's listening to this is like, yeah, maybe it's hard for you to catch up on your stories because, A, you're watching 12. B, you got too many projects going on, buddy. And C, you got to prioritize and... and Honestly, like it's fe it feels good to be behind on my television shows. I'm not proud of myself because this wasn't a choice, but eh, it feels a little good. Uh, what is it's Tuesday? Let's get to the meat of it. Let's get to what's uh, what's really important, Dante. I saw Louis C.K. live tonight. 
I just got back. It, uh, I didn't know, you know, it, apparently he is, he's releasing tickets or he's announcing shows like super, uh, like short notice. And, you know, I mean, he's doing eight, eight shows here and they all sold out. So it's obviously not terrible marketing. And, and he played a smaller room, which was really cool to see. Like, I don't think I would have ever seen Louie live cause I don't want to go to a stadium show, but my buddy, Andy, you guys know Andy. He hit me up and he's like, yo, but just bought tickets to CK. You want to see him? And I was like, all right. And I did. I, uh, and, and I think I thought more about the, you know, maybe the ethics or whatever behind seeing, uh, somebody like Louis CK. And then I think, I think a lot of people aren't going to like this and probably not a lot. Cause there's not a lot of people who listen to this, but I don't care. It, uh, I I agree that what he did was wrong. I fully am aware of that. He affected people's lives more than just the people that he jerked off in front of. Like, he affected their families' lives. He affected his crew's lives. A lot of people's lives were affected by this. At the same time, cons- consent was given. I don't want to play devil's advocate. Uh, okay. You know, you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from. Uh, He shouldn't have done what he did. He did it. You know, in this day and age where we're burning everybody to the ground, there has to be a line. We have to be able to forgive people as well. People, people wrong people every day. If I was burnt to the ground for being a little salty to a customer, you know, I'd be I'd be a witch. You know, I'd be dead. You know, that's offensive to witches. <laughs> Sorry. You know, buy some turmeric and get over it. Uh So, uh, and and this like I'm not a Louis CK head. Like I'm not a diehard CK fan. I found out about him in high school. I got into him. I was like this guy's really funny. And then about sophomore year of college, I was really getting into comedy, figuring out that's what I wanted to do with my life. You know, it would be four years until I started actually taking the steps. But I was getting into experimental comics and people who who pushed the, the genre a little bit and tried different things. And Louis wasn't one of those people. He was the type of person to do his shtick over and over again. And he, he's still doing that. It's different. He, you know, he did a lot of silly, like, false premises that are made up out of nowhere, you know, instead of based in reality. And I like that imaginary stuff. I, you know, a lot of my jokes are imaginary stuff. And it was nice to see somebody happy. You know, you could tell on stage while he was performing that he was remorseful. Like, I don't know. And, and there, you know, we had to put our phones in a bag that was like locked shut. It was, it was bizarre, but overall good crowd you know i'm a big guy we were sitting in the last row so it was was a bit uncomfortable but what are you what are you gonna do it's i don't know if what would i have bought a ticket in my own time no am i happy to have seen the guy live yeah it fulfilled this little part of me and, and and it begs the question how how long do people need to suffer, right? And and why are people going to keep acute, like, once somebody's accused, right, it's like, well, you denied the accusations. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do when you're accused of something generally at first. Um, like, I don't know. Uh, we, we, we need to be more empathetic uh and and maybe that's ironic you know with me saying be empathetic towards him and and maybe i'm belittling the the women's past uh and i and i i don't know the whole story you know i have better things to do in my time than than google people's allegations and stuff but from what i understand is that he asked five or six women at separate times in his career. And he asked many others, but it seemed like they were fine with it. Sarah Silverman to be specific. And this is this is old news, but he asked if he could masturbate in front of them and they said yes. So he did. 
And then they came out, and, and, and it's a gross, in more ways than one, it's a gross abuse of power. Here I am, playing Devil's Egg Weekend again. Aha. So it was, it was a good show. It was fun. I got to see comedy with, with two of my favorite people. Uh, the openers were good. Joe List was good. Uh, Lynn, this female New York comic, I couldn't understand her name either times the, the host said it. Uh, they were super funny. The host, Mike Early, local guy, was super funny. Uh, and, and we got to see Louie in a room with, like, 400 people instead of 40, you know, 40,000 or whatever he used to sell out. And that's crazy. And, and before the show, we got there, and there were people outside picketing. There was, like, seven or eight people outside picketing, and, like, good for them. You know? Uh, I hope they never do anything wrong in their lives. I hope they never, you know, somebody says yes and then all of a sudden it's no. I hope I hope those people don't have to deal with that. Do they meet up beforehand? Is there a page for this? Who, who writes the chants, you know? it's They had a hey, hey, ho, ho, big a tree has got to go or something. And then there was one about taking their bodies and taking their rights and power to you. You know, like the, the picketers were very, I mean, they're respectful of the, you know, they, they were getting their point across. Right. And I saw some people I recognized from the, the comedy scene and from, from the film scene and that's awkward, right? Like, I don't know if they saw me. I don't know if they recognized me. I think I have one of those faces that blends in, you know, like I don't look much different than the other 5,000, 5 million fat white guys with beards, but it's hey, it's really cool to see people fighting for something they believe in, you know, and 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 props to them. You know, by no means did it ruin the show for me. They, you know, I I think most people who saw them were like, you know what, they've got a they've got a point. Don't know why they're here though. Like we all know what happened. Uh, and and there's talks uh, in uh, there's rumblings of of comics gonna boycott. Acme comedy, you know, uh, Nikki Glazer said something about, she tweeted about how it's the, she keeps hearing comics say it's the best room in the country, uh, but they've never once booked her and she's a fantastic comedian. So she, I mean, she can probably sell out a bigger room now, but when she was coming up and you know, her manager said, they said it was cause she was too dirty. And then it turns out she just wasn't the person's cup of tea. And so there's this this big uproar and people are coming out and saying like the the owners are super selective and and you know they want comedy to stay you know how it used to be and you know kind of say what you want. And and Nikki Glazer was pointing out the irony of her being too dirty when you're going to hire somebody like Louis CK who's a very very dirty comic. Not not very 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 dirty. Like there's worse. There's much worse. Uh dad if you're listening this is not an endorsement don't listen to louis ck you'll hate it and you'll hate me everything will, you know the vacation will be bad he's not listening to this you know if he wants he oh he just wants some tasty jams baby ah. um so it was cool it was cool uh it was a good set i mean i i didn't laugh a whole lot i smiled through the entire thing but there were a few moments where I, I laughed pretty hard uh again dude's not my favorite person not my favorite comedian no i i i think i like him as a person the whole scandal aside big scandal uh i think i i think louie and i would get along just fine I might tell him, hey, maybe I wouldn't say that word a little too often. But I mean, who am I to say? <laughs> yeah, Louie and I would get along. We both like pizza. We both hate moving. Uh, but after the show, this is what this is what I don't understand. This guy rode by on his bike and he's like, fuck Louis C.K. Fuck you all. You know, excuse my language, everybody. But he rode by on his bike and then he stopped. You know, he stopped 10 yards from the door and he just stared and he kept yelling. 
And then, you know, there's a lot of drunk people who are, who are you know, anti-PC or pro-Louis or whatever, yelling back and, get on your bike, blah, 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 get out of here, man. Uh, oh, man, I just hit it. I just hit a button and I don't know what happened. I hope it didn't ruin anything. Anyway, the guy's on his bike, right? He's probably delivering Jimmy John's. Who knows? And he just keeps screaming at people. And then one guy's like, hey, man, why don't you go home? And he's like, why don't you go home? And it's like, because we, we're, that's what we're doing. We're just, we're mingling after the show before we all go our separate ways. And I didn't take part in this because the guy has his right to yell whatever he wants, just like the other guys do. Uh, and this guy, he rides past again, he stops and he like, somebody says something like, just go home and he gets off his bike and he like walks it over. He's like holding it. Like it's a purse, not, not a purse, but like, it's like in one hand and he's like, he might throw this bike. It looks light enough that he could huck it. And then he, he, he called us rape enablers and it's, there's a big difference between rape and asking someone if you can jerk off. And I've talked about this too much. I want to get away from it. I don't I don't like it. It's not funny. It's it's I mean, clearly I'm justifying someone's bad actions, but I'm also trying to move past it and be a bigger person. And so this guy is so mad and he like starts walking up on this guy and his the guy the the guy on the the, the curb his girlfriend like steps in the front and the guy the guy in the bike's like, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. And she's like, You need to leave. And it was so cool. Like props to her. Um I did hear the lady next to us say, I wonder what all the women in the crowd are thinking right now. I was like, Yeah, me too. You know, are they like the girl in front of us did not want to be there? And hey, if you're going to a comedy show, don't wear a top knot that's the size of a pineapple, because my buddy Andy couldn't see. And if you're going to wear hair that's that big and dumb, first of all, move to Whoville. Second of all, don't move your head. Don't don't tilt your head to the side. Don't lean your head on your elbow and then go back up straight. Like, like make up your mind. Either sit up or don't. But she, I, I couldn't stop watching her. I mean, envious of that top knot. It was big. It was thick. But I can't, I can't get over the guy at the end uh, after the show. Like, did you come down here just to do that? Like, I get it. Do you not have anything better going on? You know, what is, what are you accomplishing by yelling at us? Cause you're not being that aggressive is not changing anybody's mind, right? Screaming, fuck you is no one's ever been like, Oh, you know what? You, you are right. I didn't think about it until you told me to fuck myself. I hadn't thought about the situation until you on your bike, And your helmet, safety first, safety comes before all things, especially treating humans with other, you know, with decency. Bare minimum, the guy could have asked us if he could yell at us and we could have given him consent to or not. He could have showed us if he respects that. But so he starts riding off, right? Flipping off the crowd and they're booing him. And he almost gets hit by a car, right? He's he's like looking back over his shoulder, flipping the bird and car honks he's out he's gone and then everybody stands around and talks about that guy for 20 minutes it's like we were just we were just wrapping this up now we have to talk about you idiot go home leave us alone go home leave us alone go home leave us alone go you know anybody can do it i love chanting i'm i if i didn't hate soccer so much i think i'd be a hooligan you know, if I was in better shape, I might be a rugby player, you know, do the haka. I, you know, maybe that's cultural appropriation, technically. I don't think I could do the haka. Uh, I guess, I guess, I don't know. I think, I think we need to be better to each other, and it, especially people we don't agree with. Because you're never going to change somebody's mind by screaming at them from a bike. A, because you're on a bike, like good for you, you're being healthy or good for you. Like you're, you're, you're you don't have a car. You're say you know, you're saving the environment, whatever you do deliver sandwiches. I don't know. You, maybe you're a courier like Joseph Gordon Levitt and premium rush, which that movie should have been called really bad instead of premium. It should really bad rush, but you're not going to, you're not going to change it. If anything, you're going to drive people further from your viewpoint. 
and and with the, the and this is not a political podcast by any means, but you see this happening more and more in our day and age. Like people are are getting so fed up of the the far either side, right? The, the the far left is sick of the far right, so they're getting more extreme. The far right is sick of the far left, so they're getting more extreme. And and they're not ever going to bring each other towards each other without being somewhat civil, you know? And partially, the far right has very little that I think anybody can agree with other than terrible, terrible people. I'm not saying that everybody on the right side of the spectrum is, is terrible. I think the further away on both sides from the center you get, the worse you are. Again, not a political guy, not a political podcast. If I did a political podcast, it would probably be about Veep or, or uh, you know, the West Wing or 1600 Pen or... And nobody watches 1600 Pen. You know, everybody's like, oh, I love Frozen. I love the snowman. I love Olaf. I love Olaf the snowman from, from, from Frozen. It's like, have you seen Josh Gad's other work? Are you familiar with what Josh Gad has accomplished in his life? I'm not super familiar, but I do know this. I know that the movie 21 came out, and Josh Gad was a supporting actor, just one of the main characters' friends, you know, one of the nerds at MIT studying robotics who didn't want to go gamble. He knew his friend was going down the wrong path. And later on, they made a prequel to it starring... Uh, Dwight from The Office, Rain Wilson, it's called The Rocker, right? Josh Gad is in it. And this comes after the first movie. He plays a high schooler in a drum, he's a drummer in a band. And he is studying to go to MIT for robotics. And I don't know if that's a fun Easter egg for anybody, but I think that The Rocker is a prequel to 21 that, I think it's Kevin Spacey. Oh, is it Kevin Spacey? Am I just hitting everybody today? All and, and you know, both of them were produced by Harvey Weinstein, I guess. Uh so th so that's Josh Gad. Many people don't know that he's in the show called 1600 Pen, where he plays the president's son. It all takes place at the at the White House. You know, not dissimilar to Corey in the House, although this is about. I think Corey in the house, and this might be presumptuous and offensive. I think it was about like the dad was a chef and Corey lived in the White House, whereas 1600 Penn, the dad is the president, you know, and the family lives there. They're unimportant. If you like comedy, and I do, I love comedy. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite genres. You know, it's one of my favorite subgenres when it's added to things. I love romantic comedy. I like I like dark comedy. I like, you know, absurdist comedy. I'm, 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 I'm all for it. There's this show called The Comedians with Josh Gad and Billy Crystal, and it lasted one season, and it's amazing. It is... I, I've only seen it once. I got to go back and rewatch it before I give it this full deviled advocate, like, endorsey, endorsal fin. How can people, how, you, hey, you know, uh, you know, a shark, when he, when he, when a shark is a NASCAR driver, he puts his sponsor on his endorsement fin. Bye, oh, baba booey. That's like a dorsal fin. I think it's on the back of the. The animal. Um, speaking of comedy, there's this thing called Red Nose Day. I don't know if it's passed or not. I never really celebrate it. I do, I do, I do donate every year. Uh, Walgreens, you know, a local uh, nationwide drugstore sells these red noses. In the past, they were just solid red, like a clown's nose. You know, foam, big ball, you put it on your nose. Ha ha. Uh, it's to spread awareness and to raise, raise funds for comedic relief for children and maybe adults maybe just children but to make their stay make their you know their stay in the hospitals whatever more enjoyable and so i grab three of these noses right i always buy a handful because you can never have too many clown noses and i open the first one and this guy it's got this little face on it right like it's like a pretty little girl like a red no like a little circular kirby type girl and she has feet and she's you know whatever her name's roja i believe and it, it, who wants to put a little person so like if i put this on my nose i'm it, it's and I'm, I'm gonna post this picture on facebook it looks like i'm putting my nose in this thing's butt crack like no joke and so i have three of these things right and 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 the first one i open says you know collect all five and i'm like whoa no 
Oh, so there's four with faces and one plain one? That's terrible. I don't want to have feet under my nose. I just want a red ball. I just wanted to show up to my buddy's house with a clown nose on and be like, I'm doing it. I'm really doing it. But they had to go change it. But I mean, it's I don't I don't support a whole lot of things. You know, I try to be I try to be Switzerland. It's probably not the best, but it's something I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm also trying to, you know, stand up for more things, but don't say the word retard. That's my big thing. Uh, don't use words. Uh, don't use hate, hateful terms with malice. Uh, just keep trying to better yourself every day. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, trying to take care of my mental health with limiting social media. Uh, trying to, to, I've, I, I've started, uh, parking further away from places and my step count has, has in, increased by 50%, you know, like on an average work day, I was doing like four to 5,000 steps. Now I'm doing like nine to 11. It's man. Sorry guys. I always forget. Uh, it's good. You know, better yourself a little bit every day, you know, and you, and, and you'll fall back. You'll, you'll fall back into old cycles and, you know, like, like, like I had a, I had two and a half months where I wasn't feeling great. I wasn't feeling funny. You know, I don't know if you could tell on the podcast or whatever, but I wasn't doing stand up. I wasn't being as productive as I wanted. It's kind of locking myself in my room. Kind of like, I don't know, hiding from whatever I had to be working on. Uh, and not even things that I have to be working on. Just like, I don't know, everyday life dealing with with uh people just seeing people you know it's it's easier to lock myself in my room and 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 write or or play guitar you know just watch season five of bosch for the third time uh i i don't know as long as as you keep getting better and and if you fail at whatever you're trying to get better at if you if you I don't know, this is like overly dumb and positive and, and it's just how I'm feeling lately. It's a good feeling. So like, don't get discouraged if, if the, the way, what you're trying to do gets side railed a little bit here and there, you know, just because, just because you stop doesn't mean you can't start again on whatever it is, you know, so go into the gym, get at it, you know, if it's, if it's uh taking care of your mental health you know get after it if it's if it's let's catching up on every episode of the devil i mean come on baby get after it get after it um but that's all i got you know that's uh, this was a good episode it's definitely better than the one i recorded last night uh 1 a.m maybe i'll release that as a bonus sometime down the road uh but that being said, thanks everybody for, for tuning in. Uh, you know, if you want to hit me up, find me on, uh, the internet, salsa underscore Dave. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram, salsa Dave 23 again, not super, not super active on there these days, but swing by, shoot me an email at, uh, deviled advocate at gmail.com. Deviled has two L's. Cause your boy doesn't know how to spell. Thanks for listening to the show. It's been fun, but I gotta go. I'm trying to learn this piano keys. Sorry that I'm singing out a key. Thank you. It's been fun. It's been a good time, but now we are done, I guess, but, but um, I don't know, that's it, quit listening, bye!